Good morning and welcome to Worship with Ebenezer. My name is Chris Beckman and I'm the corporate chaplain for Ebenezer. And if you're watching this uh, program, it more than likely means that you're part of our Ebenezer family, one of 100 communities that make up our corporation. We go all the way from Grand Marais up in the north to Des Moines, Iowa in the south. And soon uh, we'll be building our first buildings in Wisconsin. So if you're part of this service, welcome. And know that you're part of a huge community of caregivers that have been part of this journey for over a hundred years. Please join us as we sing together our opening hymn, Be Still My Soul. Please join in singing, Be Still My Soul. Now let us pray the prayer of peace uh, attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. And I invite you, the congregation, to respond with the bold portions. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us now pray together the prayer of the day. Merciful God, constant source of all healing, we give you thanks for all your gifts of strength and life. And above all, we thank you for the gift of your Son, through whom we have health and salvation. As we wait for the day when there will be no more pain, help us by your Holy Spirit to be assured of your power in our lives and to trust in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Gospel for this Christ the King Sunday is from the book of John, the 18th chapter, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. 
If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Here ends the gospel reading. Will you join with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. Well, we have come to the end of the church year. I don't know if you remember back from your old Sunday school days, but the church year actually ends right before the start of Advent. In fact, Advent, the first Sunday, is really New Year's Day. So we are at New Year's Eve in the life of the church. And at the end of all of these weeks after Pentecost, we come to Christ the King, which is actually a newer addition to the church calendar. It's only uh, as early as 1925 that Christ the King was placed on the church calendar. And it was done as a way to sort of react to what was feeling like the country and the world becoming more and more secular. And it's sort of this play on what does a king really mean? Is the kingdom of Jesus about the secular world, the political world, the royal world? Or does the kingdom of Jesus really mean more about the poor and the suffering? And in fact, turning on its head just about everything we need to think about with royalty. I wonder how many of you have been watching uh, and following the story of Queen Elizabeth as we pray for her health and well-being. And I know a lot of you have been watching the great show, The Crown, which tells the story of Elizabeth's long reign from becoming, king, or becoming queen as a young woman after her dad dies unexpectedly, and now being the longest reigning British monarch in the entire history of the monarchy. We've watched it, or we've watched Downton Abbey, or any of these great shows about aristocratic behavior, and these great mansion houses, and the piles and the piles of servants. And while we are thrilled with the show and are piqued by the nuances of the relationships between Elizabeth and Diana and Charles and the boys, it's not what Jesus was about. I think we know that even as we enjoy watching the shows and the TV programs and even watch with interest the monarchy from abroad and from afar. You see, it's the same question that Pilate asked today. It's sort of interesting that even though we're not in the Easter season or the Lenten season, our text today comes from the trial of Jesus. So at the very end of Jesus' life, where he is dragged before Pontius Pilate and brought there by the high priest and the chief priests and all the elders, bring Jesus to Pilate and say, Pilate, do something about this Jesus of Nazareth. And what Pilate wants to know is what people for generations have wanted to know. Jesus, what kind of a king are you? Are you a religious king? Or are you a political king? Pilate could care less whether Jesus is the king of the Jews in any religious sense. He doesn't care if he's the Messiah. He doesn't care if he's a religious leader. What Jesus, what Pilate wants to know, is Jesus a political king? Is Jesus a king in the sense that people could understand in that day? Could Jesus raise an army? Could he tax people? And could he reign as a royal person? and become a conflict 
and a challenge to Roman rule. You see, during the time of Jesus, the Roman Empire rules Jerusalem and Palestine with an iron hand. And so what Pilate is worried about, he knows that the chief priests and the elders have brought Jesus because they don't like him. Because he's claiming to be the Messiah. He's claiming to be a religious leader. What Pilate wants to know is, is Jesus a king in the sense of the political world? Is he going to raise an army? Is he going to tax people? And most importantly, is he going to try to unseat Pilate himself and Roman rule? Well, very quickly, Pilate knows two things. He knows that the Jewish leaders have brought Jesus to him because they can't put Jesus to death themselves. You see, the Jewish leaders could not put Jesus to death. They had to have Rome do it for them. And so they're trying to paint Jesus as an agitator. But Pilate pretty much knows that Jesus is not going to be a political king. And it's only the people who are worried about Jesus from the Jewish faith, from the Jewish identity, from the community, especially the leadership, who are worried that they were going to be usurped, that the threat comes. Pilate is trying to decide, is Jesus a king like we see on the crown? Or is Jesus claiming some religious authority that Rome could care less about? And so we end up on this Sunday, Christ the King, in which we are reminded that even though we use the language of king and royalty and royal priesthood, Jesus is not anywhere or any shape or any idea of a kingship that we know. He doesn't raise an army. He doesn't tax the population. And he doesn't claim royal authority in any way, shape, or form that has ever been seen before. He speaks to the lowly and the humble. Remember him reaching out to Zacchaeus, that wee little man? A king would do that. Jesus is one who, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took off his outer robe, put a towel around his waist, and washed the disciples' feet. He served rather than being served. Kings do not serve others. They are the leader. They are the crowd. And Jesus turns that upside down in that if we're going to be a king, a follower, we are the one who serves. And even right before this trial, when Jesus enters the holy city on Palm Sunday, he enters on a donkey and not a great white stallion as a warlord or a general or the leader of the people would have. He comes in on a simple, humble donkey and not the great stallion. Words like simple and humble and day-to-day -day are not words that you think of when we think of kings and queens and princes. So Jesus has completely turned it upside down. And maybe the invitation for us as people of faith is to not get so focused on the title king and whether it means this or that. But the invitation seems to be that when we're looking for a king, we generally are looking in the wrong places. When we're looking for the Messiah, we are usually looking in the wrong places. When we are looking for the faithful today, we may be looking in the wrong places. It may not always be the leader, or the pastor, or the politician. It may be someplace more simple and humble and local, where we see and hear and discover the presence of God. It's been a long time since I saw the show Joan of Arcadia, and it didn't last a very long time, but 
the point of it I found really interesting. It was a TV show about a young woman. And the point of the show is that Joan was always trying to figure out who God was and where God was and who God was. And she was struggling throughout her life, always wondering, where are you, God? Who are you? Any of you asking that question? Why am I still here, God? What's going on? Why am I still here? And maybe part of the challenge, my friends, is where we're looking. Are we looking for that wisdom from the crown? Are we assuming that the president or the governor is going to be the one that tells us where God is or where Jesus is coming or what we're supposed to do as lives of faith? One day, Joan was in her school, and she ends up running into the janitor, the custodian. And she's laying out a big problem that she has. She just couldn't help but talk about this issue. And the only human person there that was kind to her was the janitor. And the janitor listened to her patiently and kindly and with care and courage. And at the end of the show, we learned that the janitor was actually God present with her. <laughs> the point of the show was that God shows up as the janitor. God shows up as the garbage man. God shows up as the lunch lady. God shows up as the cashier at the grocery store. God shows up at the ticket booth with the ticket taker. God shows up in small and humble places, not at Downton Abbey or at Westminster or any of those great and beautiful places. God shows up with the lowly and the humble. So maybe we're looking in the wrong places for our answer of, why am I still here, God? What is my purpose, God? Why, why do I feel so bad? Maybe it's with the aide who comes to help you. Maybe it's with the person who serves your meal or the guy who comes with the delivery van and takes you to the hospital or to the pharmacy or to the Walmart. Maybe it's the Walmart greeter who is the present of the king in our world. You see, I believe that God works through us that God works through all of humanity, that any of us is a conduit for God's grace and love. Now, I don't know if that God shows up as a janitor or the baker or the garbage man, but God shows up and God speaks to us through all of these human encounters. And oftentimes, they're the times when we least expect it. Have you ever held a problem in your heart and discovered that the person you're sitting next to on the airplane <laughs> is listening to you and thinking about you and hearing you? Maybe that's the presence of God in our world, the King. Have you ever sat on a bus and found the kindness of a stranger who got up from his or her seat so you could sit down? Maybe that was God's presence in the world. Have you ever dropped some money and had somebody pick up your wallet or the loose change and hand it to you as an act of kindness or rushed out after you left your keys or your wallet sitting on top of the pop machine? Maybe that was the presence of God. The invitation, my friends, is when we hear the word king, to not think that we're watching another episode yet of The Crown, but to realize that God is all around us and that the places that Jesus chose to visit, Zacchaeus, the local village, the fishing boat, that's where Jesus was and that's where we find God today. The invitation, I think, as we come to the end of this Christian year is to be surprised. Where in this time of COVID 
Are we going to meet God? Maybe it's the person giving us the vaccination or the person that we're talking to at the pharmacy or the one that even says, you know, it probably would be good to wear a mask or to get your shot or to take care or to make sure you have enough distance. Maybe that's all the presence of God in this world. The kingship of Christ who went to places that a real king wouldn't go. Who went to places where the simple and the humble and the lowly in line for gas at the grocery store at the simple place at church where you're helping to clean out the pews or even in our places here where on a daily basis we encounter people who are working with us and for us. Maybe that's where the presence of God is for us today and the wisdom and the grace that comes with knowing God personally. Look around, my friends. Keep your eyes open. I don't know if God shows up as a janitor or as the baker. I know that God comes and God speaks through the voices of others in times that I least expect it. And I invite you to see those moments and to give thanks for the presence of God in our lives. Amen. Let's sing together our hymn of the day on this Christ the King Sunday, In the Garden. Perhaps this year you will see the presence of God in the gardener who comes again to clean our gardens. Please join us as we sing our hymn of the day, In the Garden. Now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, 
and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Father, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who at this season are receiving in baptism your sons new life by water and the Spirit. Dying with Christ, may they know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who we know and love, both near and far. May their eyes be open to see the glory of the Word who became flesh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish. Grant them the faith to reach out towards the healing wounds of Christ and to be filled with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Unite us with them in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of all your saints in proclaiming that you give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Open your hearts now to God and receive the blessing. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. And now let us go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessings to you as we begin this Advent journey and make our preparations for the birth again of the Christ child coming into this world. Will you please join us now as we come to the end of our service. Our closing hymn today is All Creatures of Our God and King. Please join us as we sing together our closing hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. All creatures of our God and King up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Let all things their Creator bless, and worship Him in humbleness. All oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit three in one. Praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia.